Hello and welcome to New Frontiers on CCTV International. I'm Ji Xiaojun in Beijing, and today we are continuing with our major series about Chinese Kung Fu. In this program, we'll hear more about one of the most important schools of martial arts in China, Wu Dang Kung Fu. Now, there are several unique aspects to Wu Dang Kung Fu, which is commonly known as Nei Jia Boxing, and these set it apart from other schools. For one thing, it's based on Taoist principles. So Nei Jia Boxing uses soft tactics to overcome hard and stillness to overcome motion. Thus, it enables the weak to defeat the strong. As you might imagine, there are many fascinating stories told about the masters of Nei Jia Boxing. Lao Tzu stated, nothing should be done without reserve, and it is the same with Kung Fu moves, whether weapons are used or not. Any move, if executed with reserve, will land the person executing it in an awkward position. In Lao Tzu's philosophy, letting things take their own course and being detached from worldly strife are regarded as virtues. And these two tenets of Taoism are seen in Kung Fu. A Kung Fu practitioner must practice fine virtues. He must never give up on anything or attract attention on purpose. Traditional Chinese Kung Fu values skills, not merely winning a fight through physical strength. Taoists practiced Kung Fu not to fight one another, but to defend themselves against the wild beasts inhabiting the forests where they meditated, or to fight off bandits when traveling on foot. But they also practiced Kung Fu in the hope of achieving harmony and merging with nature, which was their ultimate objective. Taoist Jia seldom leaves Mount Wudang. Apart from daily classes and ceremonies and prostrating himself before the statue of the god of Jen Wu, twice every day at midnight and at noon, he engages in sitting meditation. During this meditation, he practices internal work, which means taking in the fresh and expelling the stale in order to guide qi inside his body. Taking in the fresh and getting rid of the stale is called Tu Na by Taoists while guiding qi inside the body for circulation at will is called Dao Yin. Together, they are used to cultivate internal vital energy, and this is very important in the life of a Taoist. Chinese古代历史渊源很久远的这个内丹术，它更强调的是什么呢？内气的腐蚀，内气的吐纳。内气的流转周流，内气的运用。所以这个古代的内丹术呢，在我所知道，我所跟一些武术名家或内丹修炼者的这个请教当中，啊，知道，像内家拳呢，练到高层级、高层境界的时候，他就应该与这个内丹术的
is attained by adjusting breathing and regulating internal channels, and Taoists integrate this with their Kung Fu practice. The cultivation of internal qi initiated by Taoists was later adopted widely by Kung Fu practitioners. Taoists believed that acquiring qi from nature to replenish one's own and making it circulate at will inside the body through unblocked channels to reach every part of the body was a magic weapon that could be used to overcome a rival.对内的这个修炼包括所谓的这个少林外家练到高层境界同样有这些东西这不只是内家所独有但是是内家所推崇 to Zhong, such a location is ideal, as he knows well that in ancient times people use such isolated sites to improve their Kung Fu skills. In such a place free from distractions, one can make great progress by concentrating the mind on just one outcome, improving one's vital energy and with it, one's Kung Fu skills. So, we have a lot of people who have been able to do this. He has a lot of people who have been able to do this. He has a lot of people who have been able to do this. 那稍不注意可能就会有粉身最苦的威胁所以他注意力非常集中他不敢想别的东西 boxing was born out of Taoist beliefs but it wasn't just this philosophical basis that it was the source of its development another key factor was the Wudang Mountains special status during the Ming Dynasty but back to the Qin and Han dynasties more than 2,000 years ago. Some Taoists on Mount Wudang worked hard to become immortal. The weather on the mountain never went to extremes and fully one third of the medicinal herbs described in the classical book Compendium of Materia Medica could be found on the mountain. This place, cut off from the outside world, naturally became seen by Taoists as an ideal place to practice their meditation. Shaolin Temple on the Central Plain, on the other hand, was dragged repeatedly into wars, particularly during the Ming Dynasty when the temple's monk soldiers were called upon to do service for the Ming government. The fact was, the Kung Fu fighting prowess of the Shaolin monks had aroused much attention from the court, and so the monk soldiers were sent again and again as a special force to fight for the empire. Compared with the monks of Shaolin Temple, the Taoists on Mount Wudang were fortunate, as a stone bearing an edict of the emperor prohibiting the recruitment of Taoist monks as soldiers confirms. The decree on the stone reads, let them be undisturbed to their meditation. Ming emperors valued Taoism more than any previous rulers, and they even gave Taoists lands to be farmed for them by hired peasants. Being so amply supplied, the Taoists on Wudang were able to concentrate on their techniques, and this made it possible for Nei Jia Boxing to progress rapidly.
Today, Taoist Zhong Yunlong likes to teach students in some quiet, secluded spot. But in ages past, Neijia boxing was taught only among Taoists and never to outsiders. While the sage old rule imbued this boxing style with an air of mystery, it also meant it was little known to non-Taoists or anyone else outside of the mountain. When the Ming Dynasty was succeeded by China's last dynasty, the Qing Dynasty, the new dynasty brought with it new cultural beliefs which had a major impact on Taoism, a philosophical tradition of the majority Han people. To the new regime, the royal temple of the Ming Dynasty meant nothing, and under the new government, Taoists were no longer privileged. To make a living, many had no choice but to leave the mountain, but there was a positive side effect. Inevitably, their Neijia Kung Fu, along with its theories and tactics, spread into the world outside the mountain. The three most famous schools, Tai Ji, Form and Will, and Eight Trigram Palm Boxing, the three children of Neijia Kung Fu, were about to establish themselves in the world of Kung Fu. The great masters of these styles were yet to arise, and their stories were yet to be told. But in due course they would appear, and future generations would hear of them and learn of them. Nei Jia Kung Fu, one of the most famous styles, 